Hi guys, this is RM from A3QZ TV, and I'm doing a review of the new Nintendo 3DS. I do not own a Nintendo 3DS, I am planning on it, but I would like to do, talk about it a little bit, since I have, I've been following the project since I heard about it, about a year ago. I've been following the project almost daily, when I, and more often than that if I get the chance. So I would just like to talk a little bit about it, and I know it just came out now, and I think it's a good time to do a recap. I haven't, I've seen a lot of videos about it, and other videos, but I haven't seen any that have what I want to hear about it. So I'm going to try to sum that up for the rest of you guys out there who are looking for the same thing as I am. Okay, so here's the first thing. I'm going to talk about the hardware. So, to start. Okay, I'm going to go over the button let overview. The A, B, X, Y buttons are in the same order as they were on the regular DS. They did not switch to be in the same order as X, the Xbox ones, as had been rumored. Th this is interesting. The power button is on the location where the old start and select buttons were on the DSi which I have and the power button is on the where the power button was on the other side it's still in the interior the start and select buttons have moved to underneath the touch screen with the home button in the middle the home button is new on the DSi the home button was just you would tap the power button once and it would turn off or and it would go home you would hold it down and the game the system would turn off the on the top screen there's a new ca the the camera which was placed on the middle next to the mi old microphone on the DSI is now mounted at the very top above the top screen so that's a new layout haven't heard anyone else catch that yet the top screen has larger dimensions. It's now a different scale. Which I don't know how that'll play out for the backwards compatibility. Now, here's what people have been really into. On the top screen, on the right, there's a 3D slider. Which, you probably, if you're watching this, you know what it is. But it lets you adjust the intensity of the 3D effect. So you could have the full 3D effect or low. I've seen on some videos and responses by people who played with it at the e e E3, sorry, at the E3 concert, ah, concert, sorry, I'm listening to music here, uh, at the E3 showcase of the 3DS where it was the big event next to Goldeneye and topping Goldeneye and Skyward Sword. GoldenEye is amazing, by the way. Check out the Wii game. Definitely get it. At least rent it. And, uh... Okay. And then, the other thing... The other part of the 3DS, which I thought was actually more exciting... Of the hardware. The slide... On the t on the left, where the, joy the arrow keys traditionally are in Nintendo systems... They've been re... re they've been moved. Now, above is a 3D slider, which looks, I've heard it's extremely responsive, and yet not easy to knock on accident, which is a plus. I was worried about that. When you're playing with the stylus, it's okay, to, it's okay, it won't be hit. And underneath it is the regular four direction, the D-pad. I don't know how that'll work, because if it works like modern games will, then you'll be able to slide your hand down and use that as an extra set of four buttons. But for some games like Mario Kart, it might actually let it might let us use that instead. Not I know what not that I know why we would, but I don't know. I'd like to see how that plays out. On the back of the console, there is a port for the charger which is the same charger as the DSi, so you won't have to go buy new ones. And the slot, which works 
both with 3DS games and the regular NDS games. It's backwards compatible. And there's two shoulder buttons, L and R. They are bumpers, not triggers. And I thought that was very... I thought, well, we've had those since the Game Boy. Nothing really new there. Okay, there's also... on the. They've also removed the... Well, the fairly standard on all the DS models, from the Fat DS to the DSi. Opposite the shoulder buttons on the interior were the charging and the two power li- and the power lights and on DSI there was a wireless connection light as well. It seems that they've removed the wireless connection light, which surprises me. They have remo- removed both of the the charging light and the power light to the side I don't know how to say this underneath the touch screen but not on the interior it's on the exterior in this they're on the right on the same side it, there is a 3.5 millimeter k port for your headphones which has been on all the DS systems as far as I know I never had a fat DS but was missing on the Game Boy Advance SP which that was disturbing to me I can't believe they would have moved that. Okay, but... The volume... The volume control is on the left. The same... Uh, yes, it's on the left. The same place it was on the other systems. Well, same place it was on the DSi. I'm sorry, I haven't... Played... Uh, no, but it is still a slider, not the adjustable buttons like the iPad. Which is, I think, nice. Okay, that's got that cover. Oh, and I, I don't know which side this is on because I'm only looking at the front. But there's also an SD card slot, just like on the DSi. But they're actually sending you a 3D uh, with the 3DS a two gigabyte SD card, which might not sound like much, but for the 3DS that works fine. Okay, now I'm going to start talking about the hardware a little bit. Or no, sorry, that was the exterior hardware. I'm going to start talking about the interior hardware. It's got a 2 by 266 megahertz ARM11 CPU, a PICA200 133 megahertz GPU, it's by DMP. It has 64 megabytes of RAM, and it has 4 megabytes of video RAM, and it has 1.5 gigabytes of flash memory. Okay. I have the comparisons here. The original DS, the Fat DS, and the DS Lite had dual ARM processors running at 607 it, running at 6 sorry, can't read right now. 67 megahertz and 33 megahertz. So they weren't dual, they were different speeds. And it had a lower, a really lower, 4 megabytes of RAM. The DSi had too much, <coughs> the DSi had twice, hang on, it had twice as much CPU clock speed, we don't have the exact numbers, and it had 16 megabytes of RAM. And it had 256 megabytes of flash memory, which I thought was too little on my 3DS. I all or on my DSi, I always ran out of room. Okay. Yes, and it has a faster processor. That it has almost twice as faster, twice as fast of a processor as the PSP. I will, if I have time at the end of this, I will discuss the PSP, the PSP Go. I'm really against the PSP because I'm a Nintendo person, and I, yeah, I have a lot of, I'm Nintendo, Nintendo fanboy, play Nintendo, have an SNES, I've had every Nintendo portable except the micro, and the third part, and the off, the weird stuff, like the Pokemon portable thing. No one had that. 
Okay. Let me see if there's anything I missed here. That's... Oh, and the total drive space can be expanded with the SD card slot. It's powered by... Oh. The, uh... It had the processor, the ARM11, powers the Zune HD, most of the Androids, and the first three gens of the iPhone and iPod Touch up to the 3GS, where they changed to the A4, which is the same thing that's going to be in the 5, which scares me if it's supposed to change that much. I have an iPod Touch as well. Okay, and remember, the biggest thing about the 3DS is it's in 3D. Personally, I prefer, or I think it's more, or I care more about the uh, awesome game lineup, but what can I say? That's not really against the wind coming, if you can even hear that. Probably not. Oh, it is against the wind. It's weird, I thought I didn't shuffle. Okay, sorry. See you later. This is RM Hourglass from A3QZ TV signing off about the 3DS. I will be back next time with more.